bluer skies, clearer water and greener mountains are what Beijing is promoting at this year's International Horticultural Exhibition. And all these for a green development concept that Beijing believes can unfold across the world. But could this expo tell us just about how far or how near we are to a greener future? Let's find out. The expo site is around a 70 kilometer drive from the city centre to the northwest, and the site is big enough to fit in a more than a thousand football pitches. That's huge. And interestingly, the site is planned out across a one core, two axes, three belts, and a multiple zones layout, which provide the visual characteristics of the expo. And with 110 countries taking part, Lucas Zoholtz and Leon Kotflik are the foreign hosts at the German Pavilion showcasing the greener future. Our whole inside expedition shows the, uh, basically the history of green development in Germany in the last 100 years and starts in the 1960s and goes until 2060. So that clearly basically, the reason why we do this, because it's still 40 years in the future, 2060, is because the whole journey isn't complete yet, right? We, we're still not at this greener future that we're trying to, to show. The idea is very much to kickstart this conversation uh, and to show people what's possible, um, especially the, the area with the uh, products made of renewable resources is always very interesting for people because there's just uh, so much about thinking out of the box. At the last station we kind of make people aware of like bees dying, how much of a tragedy it is because 50% of the few food that people consume pollinated by bees. This is a problem not just in Europe, but we're facing it in Europe, but it's also a problem that I've faced in China and basically is Chinese people are not very aware of it, so we're trying to actually raise awareness. Besides demonstrations, countries are also promoting their national products. They say China is an important market that is continually striving for greener and ecological products. Um, we are getting like uh, thousands and thousands of visitors with each day, so it's a good chance for my country to promote uh, its production and its image in China. Most of uh, our products are like wine, but we also have like gems, we have like baby food, we have like juices and like all the green products Moldova produce. Chinese consumer is paying very much attention to the quality of the product because like China is trying to promote now like a healthy lifestyle, so more and more Chinese uh, consumers are looking for uh, good quality products and uh, ecologically clean. After going around most of the expo area, it's hard not to feel impressed by what's on offer. The scale of this expo project is something to be inspired by, especially considering that it was built from scratch. I mean, think about the hours spent planning, plotting and building it. But why is China actually hosting the expo? China, as a matter of fact, is now leading the world's green and sustainable development. These are top priorities for Beijing because its economic growth, especially in the last 40 years, has induced high demand for raw materials and energy. And a recent report from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development says ecological challenges may eventually limit China's further economic development. During his speech at the Expo's opening, Chinese President Xi Jinping said ecology is important for social development as he reiterated that industrialization has led to irrevocable damage to ecology. But he continued, now is the time to get the international community to buy into a greener future. I'm now at the Xiaxi Province Pavilion and its capital city, Xi'an, was the starting point for the Silk Road in China more than 2,000 years ago. In ancient times, its capital city was called Chang'an, and this is where a local explorer named Zhang Qian went on a diplomatic mission to Europe to open the route for the Silk Road in China. And inscribed in stone, there's a map that shows the Silk Road starting from Chang'an all the way to Rome, Italy in Europe. And this now provides the inspiration for the modern-day Belt and Road Initiative.
and as the birthplace of Chinese culture, the Xianxi Garden is taking on the theme of building a homeland with a green silk road, and through a combination of landforms and sketches with curvy mountain masses with modern landscape materials with hearty culture and roof greening technologies, they are showcasing President Xi's hopes for a greener BRI. But why is China considered the leader of this green movement, especially given that China is the world's largest consumer of coal and the second largest of oil after the United States? I mean, it produces more carbon dioxide than any other country. In 2017 alone, China spent almost 133 billion US dollars on cleaning up its energy system. And in recent years, China spent more than the US and the EU combined to reduce its over dependency on fossil fuels. The International Energy Agency says by partly rebalancing its economy away from energy intensive industries, China has one third of the world's wind power, a quarter of its solar capacity, six of the top 10 solar panel manufacturers, and five of the top 10 wind turbine makers, and it sells more electric vehicles than the rest of the world combined. Despite the advances, non-fossil fuel energy, mostly hydro and nuclear, only account for 12% of China's total energy mix. And questions are being asked whether Beijing can become self-sufficient to cut down its over-dependence on coal and oil. So far, the story goes like this. Electricity generated from solar power is now cheaper than coal-fired plants in 11 Chinese provinces, including Beijing. And along with wind power and electric vehicles, they are set to reach cost efficiency as early as 2021. And from now, that's within two years. But could China actually succeed? Green development is nothing that any country can, can kind of do on its own. It's a global problem that needs a global approach, a global solution. But interestingly, there is a cause for optimism for other countries to support China in its quest for a greener future. The country's so-called eco-innovation policy started way back in 1949. This shows they have stuck to the same page all these years, albeit with mixed results. But since 2004, Beijing has been focusing on a scientific approach to development, producing clean energy technology that can conserve energy and reduce emissions to supporting renewable energy resources and low emission vehicles. Right from the get-go, the expert has been making me think about the possibilities of a greener future. This has been an informative experience. But could all this be possible in reality? You could also ask, could China save the world? Well, whether you're a yes or a no, by backing Beijing's efforts, people will at least be showing their support for a cleaner planet rid of climate change. I'm Josh, stay tuned with China Matters.